wrestling fans and welcome to Wrestler Weekly Presents. I'm your host Scotty Richardson and I'm joined again for the third and final week here in Jacksonville, Florida with the ravishing one, Reggie Richardson. That's right, superstar with, Scotty with a and the shirt that one. is not wrinkled this time. Breaking trends, <laughs> breaking trends. And it's great because I've got this shirt Rick Flair taking on apparently Mr. R. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Tommy Rich, Mr. Yeah. R yeah. here at uh you know, yeah. this is this is as about as vintage of a flare shirt oh, that you're yeah. ever gonna find WCW style. Uh apparently Mr. R is what I yeah, is I, what I get out of it. When I see that I think Slamboree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably where, probably where I got this shirt. Uh, that reeks of Slamboree. So we're here, Russell Weekly presents episode 11. 11 already. I mean, we, we're going to close this season with 15, already. so we're we're just closing in on, on the, finish line. the finish line. So here's the deal. Last week was all about Paul Jones. Paul Jones, buddy. Number one Paul Jones. And, you know, the first time we got together was wrestling action. Last week, we went through Paul Jones and the Mid-Atlantic uh, programs and those mags. And this week, we have got a jam-packed show for you talking about, we're going to talk a little bit about Ric Flair. We're going to talk about some other we'll people. probably call this Big Gold. Let's just call it the Big Gold, Big Gold. episode. Easter eggs. The Big Gold over. episode. So, uh, if you want to well, track us down. specify NWA Big Gold. Yes, absolutely. NWA. Absolutely. Uh, we are old school people. Uh, we are we are of the classics. Not WCW, NWA a Big Gold. Absolutely. So I need to take the shirt off. Uh, Mr. R may have won a fall here. Who knows? <laughs> um, it could be Brad Armstrong. It might be. You know, Mr. R, well, Ted DiBiase it, thought that Mr. R it was... It could be the Black Scorpion. ...was Tommy Rich. It could be. And so uh, a lot of things happening here in our... Final episode in the studios here in Jacksonville, Florida. Is this WTLV? Yeah, I mean, feels we... <laughs> like we're on vacation. I mean, is this WTLV? I am wearing sandals. Good. Just uh, and on. that's the key. And so uh, <laughs> this week, uh, don't forget, wrestling fans, if you want to, we're talking about t-shirts, prowrestlingtees.com slash wrestler weekly and get your wrestler weekly uh t-shirt absolutely and so also find us subscribe give us thumbs up youtube instagram facebook and twitter uh now here's what we're going to do we're going to jump right into it this is a program we talk about uh getting programs and territory talk we've we've kind of been around uh talking about programs and things you can get at the events well this is a an nwa this is the volume one number one that was put out uh, back, Terry Funk, obviously on the front, signed by Terry, signed the Texas Bronco. This was the Terry Funk that was not the hardcore uh, ECW no. Funk. This was NWA World Champion Terry Funk. And this is iconic for a couple of reasons. One is Terry Funk had the World Heavyweight Championship. Right which was the NWA World's Heavyweight title, which is what we're focusing on today. And that transition, how it went from this to the big gold NWA. That's right. But uh, this was the icon. And if you watch last week's episode uh, on the Mid-Atlantic Wrestling Magazines, this is the precursor to that. Yep. This was the very first one that had this uh, had came with the artwork on the cover. And uh, Les Thatcher, I believe, yep, also Les Thatcher editors. is the editor. Editor, excuse me. Absolutely. And uh, so this he was the first one. of the line of, of those with the artwork. And you could ha you had to buy this at the events. You could not buy this on newsstands. Now I'm going to try to take you through this as much as I can. It, this one, this one is vintage. Uh, my cover is a little worn, but just to, to give you a, uh, some highlights here, this magazine was NWA, so it featured mm -hmm. it, it through the contents here. I mean, I'm talking Georgia Championship Wrestling was page 12. Um, Maritime, talking about the Maritime Heavyweight Champion on page 10. Gulf Coast, Mid-Pacific, 
uh, even Antonio Inoki's uh, promotion, Northwest promotion, Owen Sports, St. Louis. Uh, I mean, you name it, NWA, and they put it all jam-packed. It's fitting. Show the cover again. It's so fitting that they put in the globe because that's really what the NWA encompassed during yes. this time of right around 1976 is what we're talking about. Absolutely. Here. And so now this this uh, program had has, uh, and it is a Terry. It's not in mine now because I have mine framed at, at home in Raleigh, but Terry Funk, uh, with the NWA title, uh, is the centerfold poster yes. in this program. I have mine signed and hanging on my wall. So season three, we'll get to all those signed posters. But I want to show you, this is NWA volume one, number one. Mm -hmm. Because the next thing I'm going to show you is NW, it's another volume one, number one. And this is the NWA Pro Wrestling Digest that was put out by the publisher Dennis A. Brent. So here we go. Ric Flair, The Big the Gold, Big Gold N Volume 1, NWA. Number 1. Right. And so let me just put these side by side because yes. it's always good to do that. Absolutely. And so you see Terry Funk, NWA, Volume 1, Number 1, and NWA Pro Wrestling Digest, Volume 1, Number 1. And not yet signed by Ric Flair, soon to be. Uh, and then there's some nice Ric memorabilia on the back you can uh, you can purchase. Yeah, you know, what's interesting about that cover is uh, Steve Williams, Doctor Death, with the UWF title. Yes, the Universal Belt, which was the Watts territory. Absolutely. So very interesting there. So this one, uh, Ric Flair, Big Gold. Volume one, number one, a couple good things that you could get at the events. You see here, premier issue includes tonight's card when sold in arena as the program. So these were picked up and you could, they had a little card that they would slide in at the event. So that's really what this season has been about. And so what we're going to do now, since we have Reggie here, and this is the part three of our Jacksonville, this is a Florida tour. We are going to segue. So just like we had these side by side, we are going to segue. And Reggie, show us some things from your collection that we're going to go and talk about today. Right, just piggybacking off of the end, like I was saying before i got a little distracted by steve williams the shirtless wonder <laughs> looks like half sasquatch half wild man but uh the big goal the nwa when it transitioned to this belt that you see here that went on through the wcw era run that went on through the most of the wwe into the teens of the 2000s uh, it really started here with Ric Flair. This is later when he had the haircut yeah. under Jim Hurd was running <laughs> WCW but this or NWA. But this was the NWA uh, version when he had the big gold sign. This is really the only main cover with, with the big gold of the big throw. We consider the big three. Right. PWI, the inside wrestling, the wrestler. Those are your right. three main mags that, that we considered back right. then. Uh, obviously, in hindsight, retrospect, you can go back and change things. But the first guy, the point is, the first guy that had this version of the NWA Big Gold was none other than the nature boy himself, Ric Flair, which we have that program Scotty right. just showed right. you. Yeah, that's a good side-by-side -side there. Yep. Uh, but that's that's uh, the first guy to have it. And then obviously Dusty wanted it Starcade. I believe it was 85. I believe that was the one. Could, yeah, I believe it was 85 he won it. And uh, didn't have it for a long period, but did uh, have the big gold. This was his third uh, title ring. Won it in 79, 81, and then again... I uh, believe this was Might have been 86, 86, I 85, think I think's when he won. Was, and then they, they did Joe the Lewis was the ref in that. Or Remember something? he won, but then they came back and, that's what and gave the belt back that's to Flair and said, you're right. you know, 
Absolutely. So yes, yeah, so Tommy was Young 80, was on the hot seat. And all eight, them. Eighty-six. He won. Uh, yeah, he won it at the Great American Bash. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's eighty-six. A big gold came in. Flair had the long run in the bash. He got, I think, thirteen events in, and then it was the fourteenth event. I believe Dusty finally beat him because I remember your line back then. You said. How in the world can Ric Flair go through all of these main event matches during the Great American Bash and keep the belt? Obviously, yeah. he did not. No. But the guy, then it went back to Flair. And then the next guy that was supposed to have the NWA Big Gold that was groomed, unfortunately, was in a major car crash, Mr. Magnum mm -hmm. T.A. Yeah. And look at the car. Very fortunate mm -hmm. that he lived and survived that. Broke his neck. And uh, just a, a testament of triumph over tragedy, uh, how he's been able to have a successful life, business owner. We've had the privilege of oh, meeting yeah. uh, this guy, very inspirational guy, mm -hmm. but he was hotter than a pistol. And oh, yeah. you would not have, have had the career of Stone Cold Steve Austin with the leather vest and all. This is the guy that did that look and that gimmick first. And even Steve Austin will tell you, right there's the leather vest, yeah. the black tights, the really the rough baby face, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, where he was just manhandle you like a heel. With, he wrestled like a heel, but was loved as a baby face. And this is the old United States title that they still have today. And during this time, we touched on it last week, you were considered the number one contender for the world title if you had this belt. That's right. And uh, he would have been a great champion. They even told me uh, when I, the last time I uh, spoke with him that that big gold belt was made for him, that he was supposed to be the guy to carry the torch yeah. for the NWA into a new generation and never got the opportunity. So we wanted to highlight what could have been there. But the guy that got the nod instead of Magnum, which is recorded by everybody, was Ronnie Garvin, who was a great wrestler in his own right, had a lot of popularity, he got a great pop, uh, was able to match up against the Four Horsemen and, and always yeah. had great matches with Tully and Arn and a lot of those guys. But the man uh, with the hands of stone. Hands of stone, Ronnie Garvin. <laughs> was one of the few guys to have the NWA version of the yeah, Big Gold. Yeah. And, and there on the back, the back yeah. there was the great match. And that was a great rivalry there for a time. Very, you know, uh, Ronnie had a lot of, lot of attention during that time. And then another guy with the NWA Big Gold was right around the cusp when it was uh, had gone out of the Crockett hands. It went into the uh, Ted Turner owned, but it still was not called WCW title at this time. It was still sanctioned by the NWA, Correct. and so it was still the NWA World Heavyweight title. And the great three iconic matches yeah. with Ric Flair. Mm. Maybe you can just you know hit yeah, on 1989, some of those matches. Uh, the the trilogy. Some say the greatest matches uh, in, in the history Absolutely. of professional wrestling which just shows you how great of a performer that Ricky Steamboat was Absolutely. because you know, his match with Macho Man, you know, still it's, some, it's, some people say that's the greatest match. So this guy, uh, we already know about Ric Flair, mm -hmm. uh, but Ricky Steamboat should get his due as well. And Could uh, we say, go out on the limb, top three best baby face of all time? Oh, probably so. I mean, easily. I mean, where we grew up in the Mid-Atlantic, I mean, the guy. He, <laughs> He was the guy. I mean, he come. He walks out on a WRAL studio, and the place goes nuts. Goes bizarre. Yeah. So, you know, then going into a newer era, they were bringing up a new star. That's when Sting uh, got yeah. the NWA World Title. That was a big. You know, if you re recall the class of champions that matches match that he had with Flair really put yeah. him on the map. Mm -hmm. Was just an iconic match. You could probably find it on YouTube or somewhere on the network, uh, WWE Network. But just an absolute great uh, match and a great champion. He would go on to be, as we all know, Hall of Famer. But at this time, he was you know coming from uh, the Watts territory. Right. Uh, was with Eddie Gilbert and Rick Steiner and Missy Hyatt and then worked his way up becoming an icon himself. The old Blade Runner. Absolute Blade Runners as well. 
So, you know, every time this belt kept going back to flare, as we know, and the last guy to, to have it, the last individual to have the NWA big gold version uh, was Fujinami. Right. And this, if you're not familiar with this guy, this is one of the, the most iconic wrestlers in the world that you probably have never heard of. You need to do a Google, do a search, uh, do some research. But his matches with Ric Flair are fantastic. Mm -hmm. There's some on the network. I've watched those. And this guy was a great champion in Japan. Yeah. And uh, the belt changed hands over there a couple of times. And they did a lot of great uh, pay-per-views there with Flair and this man. And this is a, a great champion in his own right and a WWE Hall of Famer. He went in yeah. uh, not... Yeah, you know, I think I want to say 2012, somewhere about. Yeah, and uh, we talked a little bit about Fujinami uh, back on episode seven. We had George Napolitano on when I had that program, Night of the Champions, yes, right? Uh, where he was the WWF absolute junior champion at the time. Yes, uh, Mike Leotis, who is our international guru, who's been on Wrestle Weekly presents uh, in season one as well as season two. Uh, he talks highly of Fujinami and his career in Japan, as well as when he came over to the States uh, and had this title. So, I mean, Big Gold, we've talked about the programs. We've talked about the mags. Now, Reggie, let's see what else we have from a uh, Big Gold standpoint. Well, if you... Uh... Look at the elephant in the room behind us back here. You're saying, well, what is that? That is our Wrestler Weekly first original Big Gold. Yes, it is. This was the belt that we had as kids that, that I made out of a weightlifting. Can we, uh, uh, you want to try to grab it without knocking our set down? Let's see. This was made out of paint cans, <laughs> glitter. Yeah. An eagle that I don't remember where exactly I got. No telling. And this was, we had an organization that we would do, it, really no matches, a few matches. but we, we did matches. <laughs> we uh, did the mic talk, and it was called the FWA. That's right. And he was the superstar, Scotty Richardson, right. and I was the ravishing one, as if you didn't know. <laughs> But that was our little organization, so we wanted to bring it full circle. Yeah, this was our big gold. This and, was uh, our big gold. And, and I wrote about the FWA in Family Bacon Wrestling, so you have to check that out. So just something you could probably make for your kids for <laughs> 10 bucks and make them happy. But, or you can go to Target and buy a or plastic you, one. Or you can get one of these. This is the big gold in NWA go. belt. Now, this is the real deal, Holyfield, here. And uh, let's see the signatures we've got on the end here. Ronnie Garvin, who we showed. Uh, we have the great Ricky Steamboat, mm -hmm. iconic wrestler. We have the 16-time, and it changes every day, according to Rick. <laughs> but Rick Flair, the nature boy. And I had Magnum yeah. sign it because Magnum... Should have got this, and it was very emotional uh, when I had him sign this, and we had a, a great conversation about it, and that's when he told me that this belt was actually made for him, and and then we have the great sting that I got to meet in Spartansburg, South Carolina. Couldn't have been more gracious. Uh, had a lot to talk about, and it was just a great time, but on the back, let's flip this around. Now, this is another one. If you watched last week, this has got the alligator skin on the back, genuine. And we got uh, Jim Ross, Hall of Famer announcer, who announced a lot of these events, especially the Sting, Clash, and Tony Schiavone. And then uh, the great Bob Cottle, yeah. that was the original Mid-Atlantic announcer and did a lot of the star cage if you go back and watch those he was mm -hmm. part of those so just some iconic guys there but uh you know one of the one of the most iconic belts see how many times i can throw iconic out <laughs> but uh this went on to uh be part of the wcw the the entire run this was the world title that it came to be 
and then it was also in the WWE and uh, th that run for most of uh, recent, most recently, a couple years back, they finally pulled it. But I remember it as the NWA Big Gold, and that's really what we want to highlight uh, on this episode here today. Yeah, and a lot of times that we'll end episodes with the hot mag, but we thought we'd end it with the hot belt since we've been uh, showcasing the Big Gold. So um, we're going to wrap up for this week. It's been a great three weeks of episodes Absolutely. here in Jacksonville, Florida, my hometown, the hometown of Bobby Norton, the hometown of Dave Wood, the hometown <laughs> of uh, the hitman John Januzzi, yep. uh, FWA. We had a lot of the guys back oh, in the day. Yeah. Hangman Holden Claw. Hangman Holden. We had uh, Carl Hells. Yeah, Carl Hells and um, uh, Crippler Dan White. Crippler, uh, Dan White, shout out Dance to the Crippler. G. Um, just, just tremendous. I mean, uh, the P Boys. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> had, we had we had so many guys that came through our territory uh, that had our big gold, mm -hmm. and and so we wanted to highlight the big gold this week on Wrestler Weekly presents. Until next week, fans, so long.